your soul and spirit fly into mystic let your soul and spirit fly into mystic to mystic into mystic into mystic Good evening, and welcome back to Mystic Matters. We are the Greater Mystic Chamber of Commerce. Good evening, Trisha Walsh. Good evening, Suzette. Nice to see you. I hear we are gearing up for all kinds of things. We are. It's, um, you know, fall has already begun to wrap up, which mm -hmm. is completely hard to believe. And I just want to just interrupt you for a second. Great fall festival. Gra it I heard wonderful. so many great things in the community. What a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. uh, worth going to. Next year, worth signing up for. Uh, but every year, Groton Fall Festival hits it. Yes, it's the most perfect weather. Yeah. And, you know, we had a great amount of vendors, great turnout. It was wonderful. wonderful. And I also just have to say thank you to all of our volunteers, sponsors, everyone that was involved because it right. couldn't have been a success success without them. And Susan Bailey and of course Dave Brown and committee, all the crew, and of course Leanne Obrey for your inspiration I think eight or nine years ago to bring this forward and uh, it's been great ever yes. since. So Absolutely. thank you very much. And I'm pleased to also announce that the GBA, the Groton Business Association Events Committee, is the volunteer of the year, volunteers, for the Greater Mystic Chain of Rare of Commerce Annual Dinner. Fantastic. And yes. when is that dinner? Uh, that is Patricia. December 5th. Okay. And that is at um, the Mystic Marriott. Okay. We have our award uh, winners, which I will announce at a later to date. To be announced. Okay. Yes, we still have a couple that we have to notify. Okay. Um, but great silent auction items, dancing to the cartels. It's mm -hmm. going to be an evening in Hollywood. So make sure you get your Hollywood dress. Um, oh, now that's going to be, we may spend <coughs> a few, uh, you know, uh, minutes probably closer to the dinner uh, to talk about that. Absolutely. Okay. I think we should. Okay. But, uh, and coming up, uh, please keep your eye on the uh, Mystic Chamber website and also uh, you'll begin to see the posters around town, Restaurant Week, November Fantastic. 4th through the 10th, Price Fix Menu at um, I think we have over 20 participating restaurants right now for lunch and dinner. So it's a great opportunity to get, get out there and try something, um, find a new f favorite restaurant. Yeah. I mean, you virtually can go morning, noon, and night. You could right? do that, especially because Kitchen Little is participating for the first time Absolutely. this year. Absolutely. I think it's so fantastic. You could have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, a couple of, uh, every year we try, my husband and I try to support, and last year we went down to the uh, Daniel Packer Inn. Uh, one of our favorite restaurants uh, as well. And I'll tell you, that meal, we thought, okay, they're going to have a fixed meal and it's going to be a certain... They really put out the red carpet for all of us that mm -hmm. uh, were participating in that. So come on down, support your local restaurants and an opportunity for you to do that and to try something different each night. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Well, Trisha, you know... <laughs> speaking of food. Speaking of food and, and speaking... You are a... I don't want to say a food connoisseur. That's not what I mean. But certainly... <laughs> Trisha, a foodie. a foodie. Trisha Walsh really loves her food. And, and I just want to tell you, our next guest, Trisha has spoke about all the time, very highly, loves this person, and I'm going to let her introduce him. Well, it's my pleasure to introduce Stephen Clemente, owner of Extra Virgin. Welcome, Stephen. Well, here. thanks, ladies. It's really uh, nice to be to here. Clean a pasta <laughs> shop, and also member of our board of directors. Right, and also a member of the Old Mystic Village uh, Merchants Association. That's president. correct. As president of the Old Mystic. That's Village. correct. So, I've got to ask you this question because I have been where you are, um, twenty-seven. 30 years ago uh, and that was to basically open up a new business yes and to get involved in the community how important Stephen has that been to your business well it's been pretty tremendous I mean I think for me growing up I grew up as a small um, enclave in this Italian neighborhood in New Haven and nobody really had any money so as a child um, community values were instilled in me at a very young age 
I would come to Mystic um, as a kid, and I would travel around uh, with my mom. Uh, we would go to the aquarium. After the aquarium, we would go to Mystic Village. We would feed the ducks. I was one of those kids, those kids that all of us know very, very well in the community. And when I was looking to leave my corporate life, um, I knew that there was a location where I wanted to open up and become an entrepreneur, but also give back, because those memories right. really stayed with me. And so the village was the logical location for me. Everything has really worked out since that particular point in time. For me, um, as a new food business entering into the Mystic Market, um, it's something that is unique. Um, these are established businesses in this community, and people are very, very loyal to shopping local here in Mystic. Mm -hmm. So when I opened, I wanted to create something that was not only fresh and healthy, but also really was an experience, and the community really bought into that. So for me, it was the least that I could do to become an active member of society in terms of giving back, and whether that is helping Trisha and other members mm -hmm. of the Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. on the board, or hosting charitable events, mm -hmm. um, most recently this past weekend. We've gotten involved at a very, very early stage to be able to give back to the community that has really given so much to me over the last 30 years of my life. And, and you know the value of that, uh, Tricia, as the president of the Chamber of Commerce, um, to get. And, and, and I'm glad you answer that so eloquently, Stephen, because a lot of times people will join the chamber and not take advantage of what the chamber has to offer. So I think, uh, Tricia, you can explain that a little bit more, but it's really a, a two-part, right? It's, it's the business and the chamber. Absolutely, and it's almost um, as if you're establishing a friendship and a relationship that um, goes beyond just, you know, signing a piece of paper and being listed on a website. You know, when I first went to Stephen's store and he was like, oh, you have to have a tasting of olive oils and vinegars, I thought, a tasting of olive oils and vinegars. Well, he blew my mind. I went home that night, told my husband, I'm like, we have to go back. You have yeah. to have the yeah. tasting. Told my parents. And then um, now everybody for Christmas and <laughs> gifts. Gets and gifts, <laughs> gifts, yes. And it's because, you know, you go in and Stephen's like, oh, well, what's your favorite flavor and what's this and what's that? and you feel like he really cares when he's asking right. you these questions. And so I think that in terms of being a chamber member, he has totally maximized on that. Right. And right. So. Well, I think you're doing absolutely the right thing. And we have some parallels. Uh, my husband and I came from the corporate world, too. And uh, uh, years ago, we opened up our our business in sure. the Mystic Village, and we stayed there uh, 15 years until uh, we decided that we were too old and we wanted to <laughs> not work the hours, uh, but, uh, but Old Mystic Village really gave us the start. Joyce Reznikoff said, you know, which building do you want? I argued that I didn't want the building that she, uh, the space that she wanted to give me, so I negotiated for another space. Yeah. But, uh, but certainly, I've been in your store and you, you spoke about a, um, a fundraiser just a few uh, weeks ago and it was fabulous. I'm glad. It was fabulous, high energy, it's an absolutely beautiful store. Tell us where you're at, and then we'll get into some of the products. Sure. Um, well, my story and why I created the store to begin with is, is my grandmother. So I mentioned earlier I grew up Italian, um, and like most Italian kids, uh, we had a role in the house. Um, my role... Nice Italian boy, I want to tell you. Well, yeah, I mean, um, <laughs> my role was to cook. And the reason was, was that I'm six foot four. You can't tell now because I'm sitting down, but I'm a pretty tall guy. And so I was... We can tell. So, okay. <laughs> so I was reaching the top of the stove at a very, very young age. And my grandmother and my mother um, were very encouraging in the kitchen. Um, a lot of times I see kids today, they come into the store and they're scared of food. Or the only food that they know of is food that they made in a microwave. We didn't have any of that. I mean, we were making everything from scratch, and we were cooking. We were actually cooking. So the idea of being in front of a stove at seven or eight years old and being in charge of putting dinner on the table for a family was something that I just thought was a normal part of being a kid, only wow. to find out that that is as far from reality as possible. So yes, my, it is, Stephen. So my goal when I opened up the store was twofold. One, um, to be able to teach these young kids today that food can be really, really wonderful, and making food can be a lot of fun, and two, honor my grandmother. Aww. So my grandmother turned 100, um, as I mentioned, and 100 years old is pretty amazing. So wow. she was doing the Mediterranean diet before there was a Mediterranean diet, and what do I mean by that? What I mean is, is that she would start every single day with an ounce of olive oil. 
And the thought was, was that that olive oil was going to protect her stomach throughout the entire portion of the day. It would serve as a coating, a barrier, if you, you mean, will. You take it like a tablespoon? Yep. yep. Not she, on something. Just Nope. Just put it right okay. there and, and go Shot. to town. A shot. shot of olive, of oil, olive oil, if you will. Trisha Walsh, a shot. Okay. And I go. see nothing wrong with that. In fact, <laughs> I encourage yeah. it. And so a tablespoon just to start off the day. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then throughout the day, she would, you know, eat and drink and have a wonderful time. And then right at the end of dinner, she would have an ounce of red wine vinegar. And what that red wine vinegar was designed to do was it was designed to speed up um, her metabolism and help the digestion, uh, digestif, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and so that ideology was with me throughout my entire childhood. And when I opened up the store, it was a way for me to present that to other people. So Trisha talks about her first experience inside the store of, you really want me to taste olive oil, you really want me to taste vinegar. And of course the answer is yes, yes I do. And as consumers, we're so accustomed to walking into a supermarket and seeing walls of products. And you pull the bottle back and you start reading ingredients. Right, right. Those ingredients, we can't pronounce half of them. Um, and so they're a little intimidating. What we've done is we've created everything by ourselves. There are recipes. And by being our recipes, they have only two or three ingredients, all of things that you know. Olives, the oil of various fruits and vegetables, and herbs, that's it. So you, when you taste our products, they taste the way food should taste. So this, this um, belief like, you really want me to taste olive oil? You really want me to taste vinegar? Yes, I do. And when you do, your taste buds start to wake up. So we've used that as inspiration to create the pasta. Um, and the pasta in the other side of our store, which is called semolina, mm -hmm. we use the same types of uh, approach. The approach being that food should be very, very basic. It should have high, high ingredients um, that are natural, that are all natural. So when kids see the pasta, such as the pasta you see out on the table today, the pasta is there fun. You Imagine yeah, you're right. a kid. When you see that pasta, um, you're like, mom, dad, I want to eat that. Little do they know that's 100% vegetable-based pasta. So they're getting their daily allotment of vegetables. They're just doing it in a unique way. And that's the whole concept behind our store is to take healthy food, mm -hmm. twist it, make it fun, make it conversational. And that's kind of where we are today. But and it's pretty. It's pretty. I have to tell you, just the color combinations, for instance, in, in this particular pasta where you have the greens, the beige, and, and, and almost a, a reddish orangey uh, sort of color. That's the, the Italian bolta. flag. That's the Italian flag. Right, so that's like my heritage in pasta form. Um, okay. And that was the inspiration for that particular pasta. The other bow tie pasta that you see on the table, um, that's the flag of Florence. That's and okay. we created that to celebrate Da Vinci's birthday this year. Uh, so as many wow. of you know, Da Vinci came out of Florence and right. created so much of what we know today in the modern world. To honor him and his inventions, we created that particular pasta. Um, we created the seafood pasta to celebrate Mystic Aquarium's 40th anniversary. Yes, and tell us about this. So Old Mystic Village um, and, and Mystic Aquarium, Aquarium right, uh, this right. year uh, celebrated their 40th anniversary in conjunction with one another, just weeks apart. Right. And um, as Trisha mentioned, um, I'm honored to be serving on the board of directors for the Chamber of Commerce as our members of Mystic Aquarium. Right. So we started thinking about, well, how could we celebrate these two together. anniversaries sure. together? Yeah. And so uh, as we were talking, uh, Jackie Alameda and myself, we came up with this idea of creating seafood pasta mm -hmm. um, to be able to show um, what goes on at the aquarium and simultaneously how the village and the aquarium work hand in hand right. to right. create a a tourist experience and a local experience right. um, for individuals. So now all of the new members who sign up for uh, membership at the aquarium in the month of October we'll get, get a bag of this particular pasta I think this um, is complimentary. What, what a great idea. So Stephen talked, uh, Trisha, about a little bit of apprehension on your part. Why was that when you walked into his store? Um, I mean, just well, because tasting, well, I mean, he has these little tiny little tiny, tiny, tiny cups, so they're not like shots, they're very small um, for the tasting. So, but uh, the idea of actually drinking a vinegar is like, oh, I don't know about that. But the flavors are so intense that it's not like a vinegar. Right. It's, right. you know, you're drinking a flavor of something. And um, what I also found was really great, and so this 
people who don't cook, if you go there, he has, you know, the description of what the item is, but also the description of all the different things that would go with it. So if you're getting a vinegar. Right, right. And then right. maybe a description of three or four different meals that you could make with it. So that's, I mean, it's just so unique because when you go to the grocery store, if you want a description of a meal, you would get like hamburger helper or something like that. <laughs> if you go to Steven's store, you get this beautiful bag of pasta and two different olive oil and vinegars and all you have to stop and doing is get some fish or seafood or something like right. that. No and you've got that. your whole meal. Right. Yeah, it, it's, it's unique and Trisha talks about it really. That is the customer experience that we've tried to create. We've tried Trisha to talks about this a lot. Well, <laughs> I just I, I, it's humbling. Know. It is very <laughs> humbling. Yeah. Uh, and it, 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 no, and it's great because when you have uh, the president of the Chamber of Commerce buying into your product, mm -hmm. I, I think that's a wonderful thing. We work very, very hard, but the reason why we work hard is because of people and customers like Trisha and yourself, yeah. Susan. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yes. um, and I'm not <laughs> Let me tell you, I have to go to your store, but I don't know what to get because whatever my husband got from Trisha, he threw away. Oh, no, okay. After he finished well, you come it. Back. After he finished no, it. No, after he finished yeah. it, yes, in the <laughs> bottle. <laughs> no, no. Wait. I told him he loved it so much, and I don't know what it was. Uh, he loved it so much, but now I know. It's the... Fig balsamic vinaigrette is my absolute all-time okay, favorite. So but Stephen has a rotating selection of olive oil and vinegars depending on the season. So Oh, tell us about that. Yeah. Well, so what we do is we created our first catalog by ourselves. So when I opened up the doors on day one, we had 25 different oils and vinegars. And now our catalog is 70 different flavors. Okay. And the reason is, is customers. So we have contests throughout the course of the year, pick our next flavor. We have individuals that I interact with in the store. For instance, you might come in, Suzette, and say, oh, I, I'm really into salmon these days. What, what goes with salmon? Well, that inspires me to create a line of oils and vinegars that go with the salmon. Trisha might come in and say, Stephen, you know, I'm, I'm really into chicken these days. Well, what, what does that mean? So as a result, those customer interactions, what each of you are eating for you mm -hmm. and your family, mm -hmm. what you're buying, what you're cooking, serves as a way for me to say, how can I introduce new flavors? How can I do it in a way that's highly seasonal? And how can I create an environment where there's always a reason for you to come back and taste what we've created? And we've done that with the pasta as well. So we've created our own line of ravioli, our own line of sauces, for instance, the sauce on the front of the table, that is a cinnamon Pinot Noir sauce. Which one? This one right here? Yes. Okay. So imagine yes, Pinot Noir oh wine. Oh my. Imagine Pinot Noir wine and imagine right. pumpkin pie with it. fusing with together, together. Right. in the form of tomato sauce. Now you come into the store, you buy our maple walnut fettuccine, um, you put that on top. Fettuccine. Oh, the maple walnut. Oh. And, and, and you, have, you have a nice October pasta meal. So pasta doesn't always have to be traditional pasta with no. red sauce. It, pasta is a canvas. And that's how we look at it. We look at oh, pasta. I as love Steve. Frank Fuccini, who is in the back, you know Fuccini. I got to tell you, Frank is in the back like this, and I know he's saying, "I got to meet this guy." <laughs> <laughs> well, so so out. so we look at it as as that, and you can see we we paint pasta with ingredients, yeah, yeah. but we sauce pasta with ingredients as well. So at any point in time, I would never ever serve either of you ladies maple walnut fettuccine with cinnamon Pinot Noir sauce in February. Okay. But in October, it makes all the sense right. in the world. Right. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to constantly say, for every month of the year, there are flavors that we, as humans, our palates have looking forward to. Take Starbucks. They, they just celebrated their 10-year anniversary of the pumpkin spice latte. Right. People wait all year for that to particular that. drink. Well, the same thing holds true. We don't always have certain flavors. And I'll give an example that's near and dear to Trisha's heart. So Trisha also loves cranberry vinegar. <laughs> well, I don't have the cranberry. She probably didn't know that until she walked in here. Well, store. so I don't, so I Trisha, don't. Trisha got the cranberry vinegar a year ago at the holidays and loved it mm -hmm. and, and used it and ran out and said, hey, Stephen, I'm out of cranberry. And I said, Trisha, I said, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to wait. I was like, cranberries are a fall harvest. We right. use 100% all natural ingredients. So I, don't, I can't procure cranberries during the course of the year. Um, we support local business just like everybody else. Right. So we oh, buy absolutely. fruits and vegetables locally. So as the cranberry harvest and the cranberry bogs are happening now in southern Massachusetts and Rhode Island, we're starting to get those. And we'll create cranberry again, but that's an example of a flavor that's seasonal 
right. that we create and so you look forward to it. If it was right. there all the time, it wouldn't be special. It wouldn't be unique. And that's the reason why I we're trying Steven, to. I think she'd like it year round. Well, but we, but we I, could probably create but, a little <laughs> batch for her. But, but, but yeah, again, you know, it, you know, Trisha. And speaking with uh, uh, Stephen this evening, you know what else he's creating? He's cre creating relationships. Yes. And he's creating family because, you know, you still have to bring this stuff home, and cook it. Mm -hmm. All right. And I think. With it, and I've had this conversation with my staff all the time. I think social media is great for advertising, for uh, connecting, but there's nothing, and this is Italian boy, like coming back. This forces you to come home, to invite a few friends over, and say, Look what I can create by going to this store. It, it forces you because you're not going to cook it for us. No. What you're doing is giving us the tools. That's correct. And, okay. And, and if you think back to our childhood uh, as an Italian kid, Sunday. Filipino. So just, Filipino. Same thing. Same thing. Sunday morning, right? You'd Absolutely. make the pasta. Yes. So, so the idea is you'd get up, you would make pasta with your entire family. Then right. you would go to church. Right. You go to church, you'd come home, and the pasta would have been dried by then. You make the pasta, you sit down, and then from 2 o'clock to 5 o'clock Sunday afternoon, Literally it was family eating. time. Eating. And it was a way, at least once a week, right. for every single person in the family, going from the youngest all the way to the eldest, to sit down at the table and talk about what went on this week. What did you do? Share your successes. Sh share your challenges. And so, Suzette, you bring up a great point. This is a way to bring people back to the table, but with a modern twist. Right. You know, right. um, today's parents are, busy. we're all busy. Right. And, and so this, this world of prepared meals and microwaving um, has a place. Mm -hmm. What we've tried to do, though, is say one day, one night, mm -hmm. just one, sit down and get these kids in the kitchen, get them cooking. Get a little stool, have them stand in front of the stove, right. have them stir that pot of pasta. You'll be so surprised. They will look forward to it. And how do I know that? We talked earlier about community giving back. This summer, um, I had the honor of teaching um, a pasta course for kids at the YMCA. Mm -hmm. And so what these kids would do, they were ranging from literally 5 years old to 13 years old. Now some of them didn't even know how to crack an egg at the beginning of the class. But by the end of the class, they walked out literally with a pound of pasta. Some of these kids will only weigh 40 pounds. And they're making a pound of pasta, they're taking it home, and they're sharing it with their parents. But you've also created a level of independence. Yes, mm -hmm. a level you know, of independence. Saying, for some of these kids who now, what you've also done, you've instilled this, but then they can go on as adults and basically take care of themselves. Because yeah, there are sure. adults out there that don't know how to cook. Well, and so to that end. Or not, doesn't have a comfort level in cooking. And to that end, we offer um, a five-step pasta class in our store free of charge. All of our classes are free. You come in, you learn how to make pasta. Class number one, you learn how to make fettuccine. Class number two, you learn how to make ravioli. Class three, you learn how to shape pasta. Class four, you learn how to color pasta. But my favorite class is class five. I've already graduated two classes, two cohorts, if you will. And what they do in class five is they design their own pasta. Then the class votes. Whatever oh. the favorite pasta is gets featured in my store for an entire month. That's uh, so cool. Yeah. Is that a class yeah. that maybe we should take in, I, during the winter time, I Trisha? think that sounds really I mean, I fun. think that would be, you get a couple of people together, girlfriends, and just do yeah. this, this. And you bring some class. wine. And you have a good time. Well, no, we want to win. The wine part, Stephen, <laughs> might not, you know. Uh, it sparks creativity. Okay, so you make yeah. wine flavored pasta? I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and speaking of wine, um, earlier, Suzette, you asked mm -hmm. what's next on our horizon. And what is next on our horizon is um, I'm pleased to announce that in January, in North Stonington, um, in the space where Gourmet Galley right. is, on the way to Foxwoods on Route 2, um, we will be opening a wine bar. And that wine bar that will is have. fantastic. It will have a speakeasy component yeah. to it. Um, and so it will be called Frizzante, um, which in Italian means sparkling. Mm -hmm. 
and throughout the day um, we'll post passwords all over the internet. Um, so you'll have to know the password to unlock special wines in the particular store, just like a speakeasy would. So that's where we're going. It's going to be a good portion that of is my gonna day. Be <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, Steve, so uh, that is fantastic news. I, I, I think that's uh, you are just so your vision. You're you've just so goal oriented, and you just want to just continue on this path that you're going on and. Well, I love I love Mystic. Business. I love yeah. Mystic, and I love this community. This community, it's a great community. This community has really embraced yeah. me. When you think about what my business is, my business is olive oil, vinegar, and pasta. And the community has put their arms around me and said, "Stephen, we want we, that. We love your product." Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it just inspires me to create more and more and more flavors and designs and partnerships and find ways to give back. And so that combination of things has really been center for me for the last two years. I can't believe it. We're going to celebrate our one year anniversary at Semolina next week. And we're going to celebrate our two year anniversary of Extra Virgin in January, the exact day that we're going to open up the wine bar. Um, oh, you're so going to have to come back and talk about the wine bar. I do look yeah. forward to that yeah. for sure. Yeah. Well, I will tell you, so we only have a few minutes and I'd like to get the information out there. At, it's the old Mystic Village and I dealt with that for 15 years. Where are you in the old Mystic Village? And well, what's so the, how the easiest way to get to you? Yep. So the easiest way is that if you're familiar with the village, I'm in between the laundromat and Ten Clams Restaurant. But the best way for me to describe it is everybody knows where the duck pond is, right. and I'm right next to the duck pond. Right. So if you come to the village, you find the duck pond, you're going to see Semolina, where pasta lovers rejoice, and Extra Virgin, where oil and vinegar mix, and come in, have a great time, taste everything and bring with you hey tonight i think i'm interested in this protein shrimp scallops right. chicken what can i serve beef. with it and we'll talk food um which is really the best part of my day is finding flavors that are going to connect connect with each individual person if we stood by my door on any given saturday a hundred people are going to leave the store with a bag of our product and what does that translate to? A hundred different combinations. What Trisha buys is going to be different than, than what, what you buy. Right. What's going to be different than the next person. And that just speaks to we're all so different, but we have one common thing. We love great food. We love and eat. that's what we're centered on, providing great food that you can take home and make with your family. Okay. Just one more thing before we wrap up your hours of operation. and We're open seven days a week, almost 365 days a year. We're only closed three days a year at the village. Yes. Uh, our hours of operation are from 10 in the morning until 6 o'clock, Monday through Saturday, and then 11 a.m. to 6 o'clock on Sundays. Well, Stephen, we're... We're going to wrap it up here. I, I love it. Can you bring him back to the show again, I think, uh, Tricia? Because I think we need to talk about the wine bar. Absolutely. And have some samples. And um. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I think that would be great. Yes. Having some samples would be more than apropos. That's for sure. So come visit Stephen. We are Mystic Matters. And of course, Tricia and I'll see you next week. Please come back and talk about the wine I bar. I look forward to it. And we are the Greater Mystic Chamber of Commerce. Good evening. Good evening. Soul and spirit fly. Into mystic Let your soul and spirit fly Into mystic